Well, I hope that by uh, continuing on with this course, you've made this commitment that you would like to learn to write features. So in order to write a feature, the first thing we have to do is find one. So we're going to take a look at the best way to start uh, locating some good story ideas. Now, there's really two ways that we can approach this quest for a story idea. One is we can think of a great magazine that we absolutely love that we'd like to write for and find a story idea that would hopefully fit it. Or we can think, I have a great idea. I desperately want to find a magazine that will publish it. Now, the reason that we have to think of both of these is the greatest story idea in the world from a magazine writing perspective doesn't mean anything unless there's a magazine willing to publish it. And by the same token, the world's greatest magazine, a magazine that you're absolutely perfect to write for, if you don't have a story that its readers would be interested in, then that magazine is useless to you. So we have to approach it from both sides. In terms of finding story ideas, it's one of the most difficult thing that beginning writers uh, struggle with. Um, and, and the hardest part is to start to see the world in a different way. And you have to see the world in terms of story ideas. What is it that's out there that other people might want to know more about? What do you want to know more about? You have to ask the question, why? How? Um, you know, Looking at people, you have to, to try to figure out what their story is and what would make their story more compelling to other people. If you, you know, see a new business, what is it that makes it original? What is it that would make it something that readers would want to know about? Um, start listening to what people are talking about. Trends are always uh, an interesting way to, to find a story idea, um, You know things that are going on in your community, uh, things that are going on nationally that can be localized to your community. What's interesting to you? One of the, uh, the, the, the facets that will make you uh, the, the right writer for a particular story will be if it is compelling to you personally in some way or you have some experience in it. Um, what's happening in the news? I was uh, reading the Columbus Dispatch one day, and I happened to notice that there was um, a trend of, according to this article nationally, that there were more home births. Um, so people having their babies at home, and I started thinking, gosh, I, I know quite a few mothers in Columbus who have had uh, their babies at home. I wonder where we fit on that national average. So a little bit of research showed that we were above the average. Um, you know, So this was a combination of what people were talking about. I knew people had been talking about home birth. I see this article that it's a trend nationally. Uh, it, I did some research that showed that we had um, met or gone beyond the trend, and lo and behold, that ended up being a story in Columbus Monthly because I was able to localize it to my area. I'm always looking at people that I meet and thinking, how can I do a story with you? What is it that will make you compelling? So, you know, I, I meet someone who's doing amazing research or I meet someone who's in a band and I'm always trying to think of how can I make this story become something that will be marketable to a magazine. Then you have to give the idea an angle. So, you know, you can't just do a story on... Um, a new coffee shop, that there has to be something about it that is original, something that would make it more compelling to readers. Um, you kind of test it for soundness. So not only is it feature worthy, but does it have publication potential? Is this, uh, this business or this person or this trend or whatever it is that you're experiencing, is there a magazine out there that would be interesting? interested in it. And we also have to make sure that we have sources for it. So, um, you know, I, I once had a, a, a great story, I thought, about a musician that I knew. Um, he owned a coffee shop. He was this incredible person. And I pitched the story, actually, and the magazine said that they'd be interested. And the only problem I had was the guy didn't want to do the story. So you, know, you have to make sure you have the sources because we can't be the source for the story. We have to get real people in real time. Then think about crafting the theme, and uh, you're on your way. But please remember that you have to make sure you have the right idea for the right magazine. So even though you may have a fantastic idea, if you can't think of a magazine that would be willing to publish it, it's not that great an idea. And you have to start looking at a way to narrow it further or to tailor it in some way that it would be marketable to a publication and its audience. Articles are really based on what we call themes. So um, this is different than your five paragraph essay theme. Um, this is more like the nut graph that we would have in news writing. There's always a paragraph relatively early on in every article that says, this is what the story is about. And if we, we have to start to think of our articles in those terms. So the idea itself is a map and the theme is the, are the particular roads 
on that map. So for I give you some examples here. So the idea may be music, and a lot of students will come up with that as their idea. But if you narrow it, now you're starting to think about how could you get a child started as a drummer? Well, is that a story for a drumming magazine? Maybe, but people who read drumming magazines probably know a lot about drumming. But it may be a story for a parenting magazine or some sort of education magazine. Um, another idea here, of course, people love um, to write stories about animals and pets. So, you know, the, the idea of dogs will come up a lot, that topic. So you can narrow that down to something like your dog has fleas. What's new among pet fighting methods? So what are ways, uh, new developments that have come up to fight this age-old pest? And in, maybe a magazine like Dog Fancy would be interested in that, or even uh, you know a smaller publication because Dog Fancy is pretty prominent. Looks for more established readers. Now, would um, a magazine uh, like you know Philadelphia Magazine be interested in that? You could think, well, people in Philadelphia have dogs, um, but you know it would have to be something that would be tailored to Philadelphia specifically. So, keeping in mind, the magazine has to go with the story idea. And again, it's all about people. E.B. White has a great quote that says, don't write about man, write about a man. We don't write about statistics. We don't write about trends. We write about the people who are involved in those statistics or the people who are involved in those trends. They are the people that make the story readable for us and relatable for us. And feature writers really start to um, see the world in a different way. You have to see the world in terms of detail, uh, you know, to be able to describe very vividly for people what someone looks like, if it's relevant to the story, what the situation is, if it's relevant for the story. Um, how can you really start to observe things and put those observations into words? That's the difference between being a good writer and, and being someone who's more of a mediocre writer. And yet you really have to be curious. You have to see stories where other people don't. You have to be willing to walk up to someone and say, hey, can you tell me more about this? Or, you know, what are you doing? Or what is this in front of me? And, and to think of that in terms of a story and, and to get the information that you need to start crafting that idea of a theme that will take us beyond just a simple topic. So, you know, I've, I've given you, uh, there's some examples um, on iTunes U. Uh, these are the titles of them. These are, uh, several of these are Pulitzer Prize winners. So Life of a Salesman, uh, Fatal Distraction is an incredible story about people who left their children in cars and those children sweltered. Um, a Wicked Wind Takes Aim uh, has to do with the destruction of a town uh, through tornado. Um, another Battle of New Orleans, Mardi Gras. So I hope you'll take a look at these articles and see how the detail comes into play, how you can take maybe a news story and turn this into something much deeper, much more vivid, much richer for the reader. And the key here, and you're gonna, my students will hear me say this a thousand times, and I'm sure that you'll hear me say it close to it, show, don't tell. So don't tell me someone is mad. Show me what, how you know that. Don't tell me that something is pretty, or uh, you know, don't throw adjectives at me that don't mean anything to me. If you, Everyone has a different interpretation of blue. You have to show me exactly what blue is, or exactly what hot means, or whatever you're trying to, to give me a, a description of. You have to give me a full enough description that it transcends my own, uh, the information I can generate from my own head. So the first thing you need to start doing is reading and reading and reading some more. You have to be a good reader to be a good writer. You have to look at the articles, the articles I'm giving you, other articles in the world, see what works for you, see what style is, is bringing stories to life for you, see which stories don't work for you. Look around, start talking to people, asking questions, see everything in the world as a potential story and you will find story ideas.